Aerobics and Fitness Challenge National Championship. Brought to you by the Aerobics and Fitness Association. Overseeing the safety and rescue operations of the 93 Worlds will be the Crested Butte Pro Ski Patrol. Heading up this skiing group of high-angle mountain rescue specialists will be veteran Crested Butte Patroller Tim Coglin. Tim has been patrolling the mountains of Crested Butte during the winters for 11 years and during the summers fighting fires as a highly trained smoke jumper. Uh, he's still going to try to go for Odyssey. Yeah, so uh, you can come with us right now. I want everybody to get, uh, get in that truck and go down to the LZ and look up at Odyssey and look at the weather. And there's a possibility if the weather's bad, we'll just hook around and I'll get on those caps and go up there and try to beat the weather. The experience to have this elite team of specialists was there. Also joining the group will be Frank Coffey, Danny Ewart, Johnny Biggers, Pete Gibbons, Roger Cesario, and Randy Weed, all members of the Crested Butte Pro Patrol with an average of 15 years experience as backcountry skiers, mountain climbers, and mountain rescue specialists. To qualify for this assignment, the patrollers trained intensely, going over rescue procedures, checking out equipment, and finally practicing high angle rescue techniques and avalanche and safety work. In 1992, Coglin, who was an observer to the safety and rescue operation of the event, was instrumental in the daring mountainside rescue of Garrett Bartelt, a competitor who plummeted an excruciating seven to 800 feet over rock bands on day two of the competition. Luckily, Bartelt survived with only a broken leg and head lacerations. It was then that Coglin decided he wanted to see the Crested Butte Pro Patrol become more involved with the event. Make no mistake about it, this is a difficult assignment, dealing not only with extreme skiing conditions, but also extreme weather conditions. Up at 6 a.m. doing avalanche and safety control work, checking weather reports, and coordinating the air ops people. Definitely a stressful day's worth of work. In the end, ensuring the safety and guarding the well-being of all those on the mountain, not just the competitors, but the volunteers and spectators as well. And at the world-famous Extreme Skiing Championships, competitor safety is first priority, especially this year, thanks to some unique weather patterns. Well, this year, even though we're above average in snowfall for the uh, Valdez area, I think we're at about, we're over 700 inches right now for the year, and the average is around 500 inches, I believe. Uh, there was a, uh, an event that happened in February where it rained up to 5,000 feet even, and so that there's a layer down in the snowpack that's still there that's a, it's a hard uh, surface down below the snowpack. So what we've been trying to do the last week is to find aspects that that hasn't been... Um, so prevalent. John Biggers, you were here two years ago as a competitor. You're here now as a ski patrolman. What do you think of today's condition? I just came down right now, and uh, the sun is really heating that up in there. It's like a cauldron. We've got wind down here, but in the main chute, in the cauliflower, <coughs> all it is, it's just an oven in there. It's really heating up. It's getting a little bit wet. So do you think it's going to turn from powder to kind of cement? It's sort of cement, but you know where it's really steep, it gives you a good edging. You know, you can power through that when you got the steepness behind you. Fire in the hole, moose head. Four days of competition, men and women, the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championship. I'm going to hold on the course because there's two spectators that have somehow drifted onto the course, and we're doing one rescue at the top of the course. This bottom part, we have a looks like a 12-year-old kid that got lost and drifted over onto the top of these cliffs, and we have two patrolmen right now uh, going to rope him up and get him out of there, and so we got to hold on the course. Uh, we got a call that there was a, a kid in the middle of the course in the cliffs that uh, was crying. He couldn't get himself off the out of there. Uh, so we went in there, uh, found him. What we did was we just tied him up to a rope and, and encouraged him to traverse out of there basically on his own. Well, a happy ending to our rescue operation and a prime example of how difficult the terrain is here at the dead end chutes during the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships.